Astra model 1903 or the model 03. Gonna do tear down here, uh, fix the extractors. It's got a detent here and a takedown screw. That's how you split it. If it will not come loose very easily, I like to use a non-marring hammer. Make sure you don't have anything embedded in there that can scratch it. No metal or anything. And just tap. There we go. I forgot to say, um, before you undo this screw, you've got to remove your uh, magazine tube, the inner magazine tube from the rear, from your buttstock. That's just like any of these 22s. You just, you've got your magazine tube in the butt. Ha! <laughs> I said that. Anyways, that'll go in there, you twist, and it'll come out. And there's that. We'll work on this next part. Got to get this forearm off. Make sure that you have the channels cleaned out before you put your screwdriver in there. There we go. We'll leave that in there for right now. There we go. action. This is part of your bolt right here. Got a flat head right there. You're going to unthread this rod from there.
hold on there. There we go. Get your spring out. I was grabbing this to pick that spring up. I'll show you what I did. You go back, lift up. Whenever you get it up, you're going to rotate it down where this lifts up a little and then go back. We'll do that again here. You get that, get it, get it back a little bit. You want to go all the way to the back. Lift that up, rotate it, and then the whole thing will come out. That's your bolt. Down there is your ejector. We're going to get the extractor out here. You really need two scribes. What I like to do is you, you can see right there, you've got your plunger down in there. What I'll do is I'll pull this back. And I will take my scribe and push down on that plunger to hold it where it's at. I get this other scribe ready. And what I'll do is I'll get it in there and hold it back. Dog on it. There we go. And then once I'm holding it back. I'll take my other scribe and get it underneath it. I missed it, it slipped. There we go. What I was having to do is get, get the extractor back and that would push this plunger in. Then I was taking one of these scribes and pushing down on the plunger on the side of it to hold it back. And then I would let go of this to make a gap in between the face of the plunger and this face of here. And I would take the other scribe and get it down in between them. That way I could take this and push it back so I could get this extractor out. Because while that plunger is in the way, it goes down onto that ledge and keeps the 
extractor from coming out. And now that I have those out, I'm going to put these down in the ultrasonic cleaner to clean those out real good and I'll get that cleaned out as well. This is the extractor spring, the one that came out. Here's the one that I've made, same diameter, making it a little bit longer. And uh, we're going to put it back together. Putting the end that has been cut. Down in there. That works better. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of lube on the edges here before we put it back together. That's your hammer, in case you didn't realize. Stuck off here. Remove this butt stock now. got to have some type of spanner tool to unthread that to remove your butt stock. If you don't have the tool that you need, a good pair of needle nose will work just fine.
take our basically our trigger group and the outer magazine tube washer just tapping it down blue Loctite on it. I'm going to put the uh, blue Loctite on the inside of these threads here because I don't want to get the blue Loctite on the uh, inside of the wood of the stock and it's recessed down in there. I do not have a special tool for doing this, and I don't have time to order one. So just be careful, take your time. This is your receiver and your barrel. Here's your bolt. This is actually the top. This is the front. You turn it upside down. It's a good time if you want to to go ahead and put a little lubricant on this. This is the way we're going to put this in. Get this out of our vise. See right there, the two slots. This is going to fit right down in there. Lubed up real good. Yeah. do is run that right in there, have it come out.
and run it in and let it drop down. And then you've got your system in there and we'll continue. What we got, get your action here and I've lubed all on the bottom side of the barrel. All this stuff has been lubed up pretty good. You got this bolt right here. And this is actually just your uh, spring guide rod for your main spring there, your main recoil spring. This is going to go right down through here. Now something that I'll, I'm going to recommend you do is take a little bit of low strength Loctite. It does not have to be red. I don't even care if I've got lube on it because we're not worried about this stuff having the strongest Loctite seal ever. We're just wanting to keep it from being able to turn under vibration. Take you a spring, and I always like to take these springs and just run a little bit of lubrication on them. It helps everything be smoother, and the lubrication will protect this spring as well. If I was in the middle of the desert in Iraq, would I lubricate this spring? Probably not. What we've got to do is this has got to get down in there. <clears throat> so you can run this in a little bit to give yourself something to thread that spring over. Now, once you've got that spring threaded in there, slide this on through. You've got to have enough of this rod in there to give you something to thread that spring over, but if you don't have enough of the rod out, you have no way to get the spring in. So it's a balancing act there. Um, the only way I can tell you about knowing how much of the rod to put in is I would start out with about a quarter, put a little bit of the spring on it, run it in, and you can bend that spring down a little bit, run it in about halfway, and then try and thread everything on with it about halfway, get it in there, and then run your, your guide rod down. And I'm holding this here because I don't want that to slide down and gouge my barrel. check this make sure everything's working properly the way that this is going to work you've got the spring and your cocking plunger that's going to fit down in there and then after your forearm is on this is going to slide on there and this is going to the spring's going to butt up right here on the front of that bolt and it's going to actually slide right over. Change it around here. Maybe this end will work better. There we go. So the way it's going to work is that goes in there and it's what works on there. Catch is, is that you've got to put this on with your forearm there. It gets a little tricky because the forearm has to slide on like that first. 
and run our dovetail little crossbar in here. There we go. And you should be able to get this spring to stay a little ways down in there. just like that. Well, we'll see if we can just run it on down. I doubt we will be able to. Nope, oh, there we go. Worked. There we go, now we'll get our two side screws and we're going to put it back together. So you want to keep this pushed forward because it's under a little bit of spring tension there. You can take you one of these inexpensive little clamps. And I'm going to actually clamp onto the barrel. And these things have no, no real tension, it just will hold it there. Now what that's going to do is give you the chance to get both hands free so you can put your thread locker onto your two screws that are going to go in there. Now on these I'm going to run a dab of red Loctite on them because they have the tendency to want to come out. I don't know, you can see there's not much Loctite there. It's just a very, very small dab. Starting them by hand. Get the other one started. That one may not be in there 100% straight. Now I'm not going to snug that, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not tightening it, I'm not going to snug it, just get it run in there a little bit. Now this one encountered a little bit of resistance when I first started on it. There we go. Now it's straight. Pays to take your time. Check everything, make sure that your action is functioning properly, and we'll move on to the next part. Now we've got our buttstock and our barreled action. They fit right together. Slide it in. You want to try and keep the, ed the bottom edge of your receiver above the bottom edge of your trigger guard there because you don't want it to have the risk of scratching it. When you slide it in, you want to slide it in in this area here. Slide it in there. This part needs to be lined up. It needs to just be go straight on. Turn it this way, where you can see. Get lined back up again. I'm going to line it up here and up and up here. And then just push straight down. 
and it notches right in. No seam there, no seam there. You've got your takedown screw. No Loctite or anything is needed on this one because you have a detent. And it's going to go right into the bottom. And I'm still holding pressure. You will get clicking because of the detent. Finger tight's good. Once it's tight, see if you can buff with your fingers and get to the next detent click. Next part, we're going to put in, put our buttstock back on, or our, our end plate. And for all practical purposes, we're going to be finished with this firearm. I'm not going to chuck it up to do this. This is a simple process. I'm not even going to let you guys see me do the whole thing. Just put it on and put your screws in. If you want, you can put a dab of some wood glue into each one of these holes before you put it on. Well, I'll just show you. Hold on. Take your little dab of your wood glue. looking to do is get it to go down into those holes and if you're having problems getting it to fully go down in there it's because you got a little air trapped in there take you a scribe or something poke it in If you need to, you can scrape the scribe on the way out. And take paper towel and wipe the excess off. Now you put your butt plate on the right way. <laughs> there you go. Now you run it in. I'm sure there's gunsmith screaming all over the world today about what I am doing here. It's wood glue. It's not harmful. It's water soluble. It is not permanent. It does not hurt the wood and it will not hurt the metal. I'm going to continue to clean that out and then I'm going to tighten it. And if you get a little bit of excess, after you tighten it, take you a nylon brush, preferably one that's got a little dirt and grime on it, and just take it and get an edge of it and just rotate it around in there. And what you're doing, you want to do this before the wood glue has a chance to set up but you want to do it after it's set for a minute or two where it's got a little viscosity to it. And uh, you just wipe, rub a little wipe, and it'll clean that out and it leaves you with a nice set screw. Uh, no harm, no foul, anything involved. The last step, we're going to have our magazine tube. put a little bit of lubricant on that. So 
these things are notorious about being a little stiff for going in and out. <laughs> yes, I said that. You guys are bad. I know what you're thinking. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. Well, this one's tight. We'll lube that a little bit more, and then we'll finish it all up here. That concludes the uh, teardown and reassembly of the Winchester. This. This gun actually is not a 22 long. Um, it's a, if I remember off the top of my head, it's a 22 automatic Winchester or Winchester automatic. It's a little bit different round. It's obsolete. The ammunition is still available, kind of expensive, but um, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to shoot 22 long in here and they have all kinds of problems with it, just not feeding right, not extracting. Um, it will fire it, but just not ideal. Uh, either way, these are really nice guns. You know, the, the bluing on these old Winchesters is just second to none. And uh, it's a good little gun. Nice for a collection, but not real practical to, to shoot it. Um, but you want to definitely have some rounds on hand if it was going to be a gun that uh, you, know, you had in your collection. So. Anyways, I uh, apologize to anybody that was looking for it to be torn down any farther. Just wasn't within the scope of the repairs on this one. But uh, anyway, I think I'm pretty sure that it was torn down far enough to where you can take it from there. And if you had any questions, you can look at a number of my different videos on different 22s that I've done. They're all real similar. And so uh, you look through a few of them on the trigger group and different stuff like that. You can figure out what you need to know once you've torn it down as far as I did here. If you have any problems, uh, send me a message and I'll try and walk through it.